Hi, I'm Mike Chapola from Airline Hydraulics. Today we're going to learn about isolation valves and their three types, rocker valves, diaphragm valves, and pinch valves. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon for notifications. We post tech tips, product updates, and best practices you don't want to miss. So first, let's review what are isolation valves and how are they different from other valves. Isolation valves are used whenever a type of media needs to be separated or uncontaminated throughout a system. Because they isolate media, they're called isolation valves. They're often used in the medical industry to control the flow of blood, pharmaceuticals, or even water. Food and beverage, water treatment plants, and other industries also use isolation valves. So basically, whenever you use uncontaminated media, you most likely need an isolation valve. They are a flexible solution that can be configured as a simple two-way device or as a multi-port selector or diverter. The first is called dead volume. This refers to the volume inside the valve that cannot be flushed during normal operation. Minimizing or eliminating dead volume is imperative when cross-contamination is a concern. The second term is called internal volume. This is the space between the diaphragm and the body of the valve. When a valve closes, this volume becomes trapped. The third term is swept volume. This is the volume of the flow path within the valve assembly. To get a streamlined flow path, the swept volume would be equal to the internal volume, which in result would equal zero dead volume. The fourth term is wetted material. This is any material that comes in contact with the media flowing through the valve. We'll reference these terms throughout the video and discuss how they relate to the three types of isolation valves. First, we'll explain rocker valves. A rocker isolation valve is a sonate operated device. As the name suggests, it uses a pivoting rocker mechanism to seal the valve seat and isolate the flow path. In this illustration, you see a non-activated rocker valve along with the flow path of the medium. As the rocker mechanism is activated, it seals the valve seat and isolates the flow path. Rocker valves have a compact size that are usually a lot smaller than diaphragm valves. They also have a low internal volume and have fast actuation times. On the other hand, rocker valves are not as well swept as diaphragm valves. So they typically carry more dead volume. That means media can remain within the valve after use. Rocker valves also cannot sustain corrosive chemicals, which will give them a shorter lifespan. In those cases, you could turn to our next type of valve called diaphragm valves. Diaphragm valves, also known as membrane valves, are named after the diaphragm that extends and retracts to isolate the flow path. In this illustration, you can see a non-activated diaphragm valve along with the flow path of the medium. The flexible diaphragm is located just below the compressor. When the valve is activated, the compressor pushes the diaphragm towards the valve seat. When the diaphragm completely seals the valve seat, the flow path becomes isolated. When selecting a diaphragm valve, it's important to consider the material of the diaphragm as well as the medium being used. Some diaphragm valves use elastomeric membrane, such as FKM or EPDM. These materials are very elastic and can tolerate fine particles. But common chemicals such as methyl or alcohol can damage the membrane, and for that, PTFE is used with more resistance to chemical corrosion. The last valve we'll be discussing are pinch valves. Pinch valves are named after the pinching mechanism that isolates the medium flow path. In this illustration, we have a pinch valve along with the flow path of the medium. Pinch valves require flexible tubing to carry the media, and unlike other isolation valves, this is the only wetted part of the valve. When the pinch valve is activated, the pinch bar squeezes or pinches the tube and isolates the flow path. Pinch valves can be operated manually, with air pressure, or electrically. For medical applications, medical grade silicon tubing is often used, and for chemical compatibility, other grades of neoprene or silicon can be used. Pinch valves provide an effective media isolation with zero internal or dead volume. However, they often require more electrical power or air pressure to operate than diaphragm valves. Over time, they can also create an oval profile in the tubing, 
which can reduce the flow rate and create a potential for clogs. Pinch valves also are not suitable for high flow rates or high pressures, as the soft tubing can only handle a max pressure of 20 to 30 psi. Despite this, pinch valves are a popular choice for a lot of medical applications. The disposable tubing is easy to sterilize or replace, and since that's the only wetted material, the risk of cross-contamination is minimal. So if you're in the market for an isolation valve, check out Clippert. They are an American manufacturer with an impressive line of isolation valves. To learn more about them, click on the link below and get 5% off their products by using the promo code MIKE during the checkout at airlinehide.com. So if you have any questions about this video or have suggestions of our next one, let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned to more videos from Airline. See you next time and give me a thumbs up if you like this video.